there, welcome to Florian Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got A Models 170 second scale M3 Bison. Obviously Cold War sort of giant jet, beautiful aircraft. So it'll be interesting to see what A Model have done with it. Only for the last few months we've been reviewing a few of their kits and they do seem to be a little bit hit or miss. So it'll be interesting to see what we get with this kit. So as you can see, it is a monster box because let's face it this thing is a monster model we just about get it down in there so we've got a little bit obviously about the aircraft as you can see on there we've got the actual the one on here it's got your mark part number so it's 72008 and we've got a little bit on the here with other models that they do in the series okay so pretty good stuff all of that anyway in the box itself you can find somewhere for the lid to be honest the lid is a little bit flimsy so hopefully it'll stand there okay as we can see a big piece of resin what actually we can see this is one piece no it's not one piece it's two piece been molded together it looks like they've pre-glued that entire section together and as we can see it doesn't look particularly nice but for the moment, let's have a look <laughs> in here. So, will this be the worst kit we've seen in a while? Time will tell. So, the instructions. Typical A model way of doing it. We've obviously got the part layouts from the sprues. Couple of ones we don't use. Uh, they've been greyed out down in here, as you might imagine. And then making our way through, we've got other ones right in here. Just a few that aren't being used. But you can see we've got a lot of injection molded stuff as well to go in. Straight off into the back, we've got the front end going on here. Okay, so it is a plug-in front end for the different versions. Got the cockpit section going through, the crew seats, things like that. Pretty basic, but it is 172nd. Obviously, some more details going down in there. The crew for the upstairs and downstairs positions right the way through. And then down in here, we've got the rear gunner's seat as well with the twin uh, cannons at the back being fitted in okay nice little touch then it's straight into the internals of it so probably got a little bit of cutout to do as we know we're going to be in this area just down on here and then we're going straight into there okay so we've got some internal bits going in that's going to make up this area which obviously goes inside the rear bomb bay okay which acts like a rear bulkhead for that one as well and then more parts all being fitted into those and then obviously we've got the gear going together all right right the way through and then we've actually got the uh, center uh, gear positions being fitted down into that one going right the way through and then obviously all the other type of bulkheads for the front one as well and then obviously some of the plumbing and wiring and hydraulic systems for that okay then we've got the other ones going in for the side areas so you've sort of got to slip them up inside which is a, a interesting way of doing it but those being fitted in there and obviously gear doors uh, being fitted down on there and again there's that other giant gear going down in the middle okay and then as we make our way through over to the engine so it does look like we've got a decent intake length but it is in multiple parts as well so it'd be interesting to see what those are like fitting those in and then we've got the rears for the nozzles at the rear and some plating work going on the back looks like we've got a little bit of photo etch or perhaps not yeah it looks like photo etch being fitted down in there for the wing fences so those are being fitted and then exactly the same in a repeat for the other side and then we've actually got the uh, little outrigger wheels uh, being fitted down on those as well and then obviously beginning to bring it all together by putting in lots of the lumps and bumps and the aerials, the, the little uh, gun underneath the belly, okay, and then that big old gear system being fitted onto this one as it makes its way through. And again, starting to come together, as you can see, with the doors being fitted and all the little activators, more aerials and blades and things like that. Tail system going down on there, so we've got a plug-in unit for that part that we built for the tail gunner section is going to fit in on the back, rudders, tail planes, things like that, all being fitted down on there, and then the front end being fitted, so again, that entire cockpit area being slid into the actual tube system there and then a gun system and it's saying about not gluing it but I'm sure you would because you wouldn't want that dropping off and rattling around your model and again another piece for the aerial system of running down on the side and again as you can see lots of pitot tubes and things like that the usual suspects going on the side of the fuselage same on the other side and then various air scoops and aerials and antennas again for the other side and then which is a nice touch as well we've actually got some FOD covers for down in the front end as well nice to see that so if you are a little bit concerned about some of the details down in there and smoothing out those intakes you can obviously just close them up and again we've got rear ones out of the way as well two versions available so we've actually got the one for the in-flight refueling probe or obviously the standard nose and then obviously you can see them down in here for the color scheme which is that sort of standard uh, gray and white scheme right the way over them just like that and then again we've got the other one on the back okay very iconic aircraft the bison but it's one of those ones where it is just so big so this is when a model come into their own and we will start with this and this looks horrible um 
yeah, there's no easy way to um, explain this apart from it's pretty gnarly. Uh, a model do tend to be this thing. It's either really nice, really horrible. And unfortunately, this is more on the horrible side. Okay, so looking at some of the surface detail, we do have a few problems, as you can probably see it down here. It fades out to hardly anything, then comes back in quite deep. Some of it is really thick and wide. Some of it's quite nice and crisp. But the real problem we've got is down in here. Obviously, we've got to cut open these sections for putting the gear in. But generally, starting at the front, as you can see, some of this is truly awful, the way that they've actually put this together. I can understand doing it and gluing it together like this, purely because then it keeps it structural and it stops it from warping. And the biggest problem with this kit is obviously gonna be warpage if it was two halves. The only thing is you think they make a nicer job because down at the back here, you can probably see they've tried to clean it up with obviously a belt sander uh, just to make it feel and look a little bit better. But to be honest, it's not really doing it. And you can probably see down on the back here, it's a difficult model to show because it is just so big but it looks truly agricultural in its nature. And then the spine system, again, they've tried to clean up some of these glue marks and various things down on here, but again, I don't think they're really kidding anyone. Uh, the plug on the front, which obviously I assume you could just cut out and remove. You might be able to leave it in there, but if you wanted to, you could cut this out and remove it. Uh, but again, it's just, yeah, a little bit gnarly, shall we say, all of this one. The details are all here, but honestly, I can imagine this being a full fill job, rescribe, re rivet, and go through the motions of really making it your own. Down here on the end, as you can see, this will need a lot of work to clean this up. It's not even a good fit with these two halves going together and things like that, if we're honest, okay? So from that point of view, it's gonna take a little bit of work. It's a nice, impressive size, and I think it's gonna look lovely, but straight off the bat, there's a lot of work involved in that. And you can see up here at the top, it's just truly lumpy. The wings, obviously, these are gonna need to be drilled out and pinned, but again, this is resin, so I'd highly recommend putting a little bit of brass through it just to stop this thing sagging over time, because again, it's not a cheap kit. Okay, let's do the other highlight, which is the wings, which again, they've put together, but as you can see, they are pretty ropey. Again, like this is, um, yeah, okay, it's, it's pretty shocking down in here. You can probably see it's not really winning any awards for clean molding and things like that. But again, they put it together obviously to stop it. So really take it as what it is. It's gonna need a lot of cleaning up, but you can probably see from the surface detail, this is truly like a plowed field. There's nothing smooth or nice particularly. The only thing that is your saving grace or what I would do is rescribe all of this now, then sand and polish and smooth out and then go in there with the, the lighter details. At least you've got a guide to where everything is. The upside to all of this is resin. So resin's really easy to work with. It's easier to work with, I think, than plastic because it's easily rescribed, it's easily filled and sanded and blended. So from that point of view, I think you can probably get something out of this. The other side, as you can see, we've got, this is even worse, this wing, I'll be honest with you. Because as you can see, a lot of the panel lines are so filled with rubbish, obviously during the molding, that they're now physically raised panel lines. We catch it in the light. But these are actually raised panel lines here, not because of where it uh, is, should be raised, it's just that there's so much medium been left over from the injection molding process it's now gone hard in here and again when you get up to the business end up here the details fade off to nothing uh, and again it's pretty nasty and gnarly and again we've got cracks air bubbles sorry matt this is matt's kit but you'd have to do it anyway but you can see we've actually got chunks sorry matt i'm gonna do it because i want to show it let's say matt's kit thank you matt for donating this but as you can see it's just nasty and needs filling. And to be honest, it's like that across pretty much the entire wing section. This stuff under here, you can see we've got bubble marks in there and yeah, that's not nice. None of that is horrible. You've actually got foam in here. This is soft foam down in there, weirdly enough. I don't even know what that's for. But yeah, it's actually soft foam. Uh, yeah, not sure what that is, but hey, there we go. Again, gnarly. That's my favorite word for this kit so far, is gnarly. Anyway, over to the highlight. Now we move on to the more injection molded stuff. So, down in this bag here, this is the bag that is for this particular version. Uh, obviously we have got various kits down in here. So we've got the actual, the nose, uh, again, it is injection molded, but it's not nice at all. It's very, very flashy. Uh, it's not the best stuff, as you can see. Gonna need a little bit of work 
uh, to make all this right. We've got the bulkheads, the various things down in here. Again, we've got stress marks already, which this, as far as I'm aware, kit has never been touched. Um, so there's a little bit of stress work going down in some of these parts. They're incredibly thick, which means this area here, I think you're gonna have to thin to be able to marry it up to the front of the fuselage, so stuff like that. But generally, as you can see, this um, uh, chewed up toffee is actually a sprue with seats. But as you can see, uh, flash, I think we're an understatement there. I think we're calling this more than flash. I'm calling it pretty nasty stuff. Okay, and again, very lacking in detail on all these parts. The way that the parts join the sprue, again, we're not winning awards with this particular kit, okay? Um, some of the smaller stuff, which clearly should be clean and sharply molded and isn't, um, to be honest, it's not nice, but we've got various aerials and handles there. Wheels. Okay, looks like we've got a blowout on this particular tire. As you can probably see, that's nothing short of horrible. Uh, and yeah, some real uh, problems with some of the molding uh, I'm feeling. So we've got some issues down in there. Um, and they're the same on all the sheets. So yeah, the injection molding process is flawed. It's not like this is a one-off, they're all like that. So um, just be uh, warned about that one. We'll do clear parts in a moment. Uh, we've got one of the Bombay, uh, sorry, the gear door areas or for the Bombay in the middle. Uh, that doesn't look too bad in the great scheme of things. Okay. Sometimes it's not nice to do, give a bad review, but I'm not liking this at all. Glad it's not my kit. Okay, sorry, Matt. Okay, as modelers, as we know, you would beat this thing into submission and it will be fine. I'm just playing. So down on here, we've got various turrets for the rear. Again, it's going to need a lot of cleanup. A lot of sorting out with these parts, generally. As you can see, we're pretty much there. Again, it's all here, it's just not nice here. Uh, it's just gonna need a lot of work, a lot of tidy up. So we've got uh, tail planes. Uh, and again, it doesn't look too bad. Actually, this one's pretty good. That's nice, clean, sharp. In fact, it's probably the best sprue so far. That's quite nice indeed. But you can probably tell by the molding, if you look in here, see the holes on the actual sprue trees? This is where it comes out and it's hot and then it shrinks and sinks. This is the trouble you've got. At least they're on the actual sprue and not on the parts, he says. Okay, the outer uh, wingtip areas for the outer rigger wheels, things like that. Again, plenty of cleanup required. Perhaps the odd little uh, flaw in the injection molding as well, whether it's come up short. These wheels, for instance, I think you're gonna need a little bit of work to get these uh, outer idler type wheels to do anything. Okay, but as you can see, it's, um, yeah, okay. The control surfaces, so down here we've got the actual ailerons. Uh, I think we've got a little bit of warpage, to be honest, uh, down on here. It's a little bit sinky, uh, and again, on the other parts, it's not too bad. I think we're gonna get away with that. Okay. Okay, oh, we were wrong. I thought these were actually gonna be in metal, but they're not, they're actually in resin. So this is the wing fences and the various parts like that, and the aerials, those types of things. Actually, that's not too bad, you can get away with that. Keep it on a nice flat sheet, give it a sand and I think it'll be good. Down in here we've actually got the in-flight refueling probe which you might see has got a huge sink mark in there. So you're gonna to have to take care of that both sides and some detail on the end probably won't go amiss. Okay, so you're gonna to need to do a little bit of work on that. Okay, the tail. Okay, it gives you an idea of the size of this thing. It is a very large tail. Uh, unfortunately it is one piece, well it was two pieces but they've again glued it together. There's a little bit of burring between the two. It's going to need a little bit of work, but again, that isn't so much a problem. Again, I would just rescribe it and then sand the hell out of it and put the detail back in afterwards because it is easy to do. Okay, so down in here, intakes and engines. Okay, so it's going to be match pairs because obviously for both sides, but as you can see, we've got the actual first stage compressor and then the actual uh, engine rear nozzle type areas. As you can probably see, there's nothing fancy in that at all, okay? But it's there, it's practical, it just needs a lot of cleanup. This flash I'm gonna give up on because it's not flash, it's giant chunks of plastic. Uh, but yeah, so match pair for those. Uh, your intake covers we were speaking about, actually not too bad considering. So yeah, that's okay, they'll be all right with a bit of paint. Okay, these are the actual intake trunking areas themselves. And again, I think by the time you clean them up and get them in, but I probably think most of us are gonna go down, or if you are building this kit, you're gonna go down the route of actually uh, using the FOD covers to avoid all of that. 
Okay, so the actual engines themselves, again, plenty of cleanup I think required down in here, as one might see. And again, I think it's going to need a rescribe, uh, but it is all here. That's fine. Again, I think because it's the type of kit is it's big and bulky. Get in there, sand the hell out of it, get it all in good shape, then worry about it afterwards. Exactly the same for the other side. Okay, the actual intakes. Actually, that's not too bad. This is actually quite nice across the top here. That's looking pretty good. I don't have any issues with that. This one down here is a little bit flashy, but actually that's pretty good. That's one of the better sprues. Always up the better sprue. Okay. Last up, so this will be, we assume, all the wheel wells and things and the delicate bits. Okay, that's going like that. Okay, so down on here we've got the bulkheads, as you can see. Again, that's actually some quite nice detail in those. I think that's going to be okay. But it's again, good clean up, tidy up and things like that. I think it's going to be fine. Okay, as you can see, we've got some of the details down in there. And actually, there's a lot more detail in here than there is on most of the rest of the aircraft, to be honest. Because there is some nice details down on the inside there. So this is inside those sections. Again, we've got some plumbing, some wiring, some various things down on these. That's not too bad at all. Pretty good, actually. Okay, and then again, the last one, more doors, gear doors, things like that. I think that's okay. And then on to the smaller bits. So again, we've got things on this one again. You have to be very careful getting these off the sprue, very careful cleaning them up. This styrene also seems quite brittle uh, to the touch. Again, some of the hose work and various items down there on there. Gear. Yeah, so there's huge sink marks in the gear things like that you're gonna to have to take care of really because your gear is going to be seen on this okay and then again on this one a little bit of stress work on some of these parts as well i don't understand why they're so stressed i think literally judging by the sink marks on this uh they come out of here far too quick there's not enough pressure and they're drawn out of the mold too fast so yeah okay clear parts which, you know, on something like this isn't a big issue. And actually, they're not too bad, funnily enough. They're not perfect by a long shot, but in the great scheme of the rest of the kit, that isn't too bad at all. Even these rounded items, as you can see, they're pretty nicely molded on that one. And then again, we got this one down on here. Lovely, okay. Decals, as you can imagine, very limited. We've just got some normal sort of red stars. Some of the stencil data, which looks like it's generic blurbing, so it's just blocks instead of actual writing, and then markings, instrument panels, things like that down on there as well. Okay. And that is it. So, the thing is with this kit, yes, I could sit back and I could come up with a hundred jokes about it, and I could literally rip into this kit being a piece of rubbish and it's useless and everything else. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's a one seventy second scale bison and that is the thing it's a bison there is no such thing as 172nd scale bison out there so this is your only choice so at that point you have to literally take a step back and say right okay i'm going to commit to a model like this and when you commit you're going to have to commit fully to it i would just beat this thing back into submission literally i would rescribe everything before i even go near it then we would sand it back then we would do filler work a little bit of like rescribing and adding final details to it and then attack the kit as it is okay and make your way through it it is interesting how they've actually got this all molded together to stop warpage that's a really good idea because this type of kit if you imagine it it's up in your loft it gets hot it goes cold these things warp that's a good way of stopping it because then it's only got itself to warp against and it should hold itself also having the plug in the front which looks a little bit odd uh, but definitely from our point of view that's a good thing because again it stops things moving and warping and everything else like that so you cut that off last or leave it in and then just plug into it and you'll be good to go with it but it is what it is it's a 70 second scale bison and who isn't going to look at that if it's done and it's done nice it's going to look fantastic in your display or at a model show and things like that so in some ways although yes i could say this is probably one of the worst kits i've ever seen which isn't a lie in some ways it's a good kit because it's the only one so from that point of view, it gets points in both directions. I don't think it's for a beginner. Certainly you're gonna to wanna to cut your teeth on far easier kits before you come in here. But I don't think, honestly, it's anything that the average modeler couldn't handle with plenty of filler, time, and some good sanders, and you'll be absolutely great with it. So there we go, that is A Models 172nd M3 Bison.
Thank <laughs> you.